smile. Welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in. Back in May, we took a look at five trail-worthy hardtails under $1,200, and that video is far more successful than I ever imagined. Thank you for watching that and the positive feedback on that video. It seems like it helped a lot of people in their new bike purchasing decisions, and I'm glad it was of use. I've received a few requests to do a similar video for a smaller budget, so that is exactly what we're going to do today. I've got five awesome hardtails under $800, Four out of five of these bikes are 2021 models, so they're brand new, and I'm very excited to share these with you. I think these are all really good options under $800. The five bikes on this list do lack some features that all five of the bikes on my under $1,200 list do offer, so I wanted to go ahead and touch on those really quickly before we get started. Through axles. Through axles are really nice to have on a modern bike as it increases the rigidity of where the wheels attach to the frame. They also keep your wheel aligned where an open dropout can introduce play. And this is important, especially with disc brakes when you have minimal clearance for your rotor. With an open dropout, it can create a little bit more noise and rubbing on your disc brakes. Through axles keep the wheel nice and straight nice and secure. It also limits your wheel upgrade choices in the future as less and less wheels are using quick release skewers and are opting to use boost through axles. Next would be a tapered head tube. I was trying to figure out how to explain the benefits of a tapered head tube. Luckily, Kona's website has a pretty great explanation, which I'll read to you now. Spoiler alert, there is a Kona bike on this list. More girth at the bottom of the head tube better distributes shock force, prolonging the bearing life of the headset itself and eliminating brake shutter while providing confident steering performance. The inherent strength of its triangular design also means a stronger steering position and improved balance, giving the rider more control in rough terrain. That's a really good explanation. Thank you, Kona's website. If I had to explain it myself, it would have sounded a lot dumber. The through axles and tapered head tube to me are really important because those are things you can't change about the bike frame in the future. Air sprung forks. Air sprung forks offer more tunability and better customization based on your weight and riding style. Four out of the five bikes on this list use a coil sprung fork, which you can usually make some minor adjustments to it, but the differences aren't as obvious on a coil fork as they would be on an air fork. And the last thing you probably won't see as a feature in this price range is tubeless compatible wheels and tires. Four out of the five bikes on this list make no mention of tubeless compatible wheels or tires. While it is possible to convert non-tubeless wheels and tires tubeless, I'm speaking in terms of manufacturer recommendations and specifications. If you do want to attempt to convert any of these tubeless, please do so at your own risk. I will be noting which bikes on this list have these certain features and which do not. These bikes are perfectly suitable. I just wanted to note those things for you so you can make an informed decision. The two requirements that I did have for this list were all the bikes had to have a one by drivetrain system and hydraulic disc brakes. One by drivetrains are pretty much the standard in mountain biking now. Hydraulic disc brakes offer better stopping power and the levers are easier to pull so I think that's very important for a beginner's confidence is being able to stop quickly and safely. These two requirements do limit the options under the $800 price range, so in my research, these are five of the best bikes in this price range. I am fully aware that pretty much every bike everywhere is sold out right now. Four out of the five bikes on this list are 2021 models, so they should be coming available in the next couple of months. Use this video to arm yourself with knowledge so you find the right bike and you're ready to pull the trigger when they become available. That should be enough disclaimers for now. Let's go ahead and get right into the bikes and we'll start with the most budget friendly option, the 2021 Giant Talon 2. Coming in at $575, this bike comes in both 29 inch and 27.5 inch variants, depending on the frame size. Smaller frames get 27.5 inch wheels and the larger frames receive 29 inch wheels. Fork travel also depends on frame size, but ranges between 80 millimeters and 100 millimeters using a Suntour XCT30 coil fork. It has a one x nine micro shift advent drivetrain, which I've heard really good things about. The advent rear derailleur does come in clutch and non-clutch variants, and this bike uses the non-clutch version. What does that mean, you may ask? 
A clutch ensures tension is retained in the derailleur and helps reduce dropped chains over rougher sections. I've noticed a couple of typos on Giant's website about this bike, so I'm gonna make some assumptions here. Their website says the cassette has a 12 to 46 tooth range. I went to the MicroShift website. They don't offer a 12 to 46 nine speed cassette. They do offer an 11 to 46. It also says it comes with a 36, 22 front chain rings, which would mean it has a front derailleur. This bike obviously does not. Whoa, hello, me again. Sorry to interject. As I was editing this video, I noticed a couple more things on the Giant website that didn't look right. So under the chain section, it actually shows an eight speed chain and same with the shifter, it shows a Shimano eight speed shifter. I wanted to be as accurate as possible in this. So I actually emailed Giant and I have to applaud their response time. They responded within about an hour. They confirmed for me that the Talon 2 will be a one by nine drivetrain using the MicroShift Advent, and it will have an 11 to 42 tooth cassette. They also said they will be updating their website here in the next couple days. Back to the video. This bike also has Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. This bike does offer internal cable routing and it's even dropper post compatible, which is a really nice feature at this price point. This bike has a non-tapered straight head tube, open dropouts, and non-tubeless compatible wheels rolling on Kenda Booster tires. Geometry is about what you would expect in this segment with a 67.5 degree head angle on the 27.5 inch version and a 68.5 degree head angle for the 29 inch version. Both variants feature a 74 degree seat tube angle for better pedaling efficiency. All in all, this is a really nice bike for the price. If spending as little as possible while getting some nice features is your goal, then this is the bike for you. Next is the 2021 Specialized Rock Hopper Comp, coming in at $750. This bike is the same deal as the Giant Talon. It offers both wheel sizes, it just depends on the frame size. Fork travel, again, depends on frame size, ranging between 90 and 100 millimeters, using a Suntour XCM coil fork. The Rockhopper also uses the MicroShift Advent 9-speed drivetrain, but it does have the clutch rear derailleur. It has a smaller ranged 11 to 42 tooth cassette with a 30 tooth front chain ring. The Rockhopper uses Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes and also features internal cable routing along with dropper post capability. Unfortunately, it has a non-tapered head tube, open dropouts, and non-tubeless wheels and the tires are specialized ground control sports. Geometry wise, it has a 68 degree head tube angle for the 27.5 inch version and 68.5 degrees on the 29 inch version. This bike has a slightly slacker seat tube angle than the Giant at 73 degrees and 73.5 degrees for the 27.5 and 29 inch versions respectively. In comparison to the Giant, this bike offers a slightly better fork, better brakes, the clutch rear derailleur, and four color options. I had a 2013 Rockhopper and it was a pretty good bike, but I think the next three bikes each offer a little bit more for the same price. Next up is the 2021 Kona Fire Mountain and Kona Lava Dome. Pretty sweet names if I may say so myself. Both these bikes come in at $750 and are virtually the same bike, except the Fire Mountain is the 27.5 inch version and the Lava Dome being the 29 inch version. Both bikes have 100 millimeters of suspension travel from a Suntour XCR32 coil fork. Both also use the MicroShift Advent 9 speed with clutch and have an 11 to 46 tooth cassette with a 28 tooth front chain ring. The brakes are Tektro HDM 275 hydraulic disc brakes. The Konas also offer internal cable routing with dropper post capability. The one thing that these Konas offer that the last two bikes don't is a tapered head tube. The differences end there as these also have open dropouts and non-tubeless ready wheels, both rolling on WTB Trail Boss tires. The head tube angle for both bikes is 68 degrees and the seat tube angles are both at 75 degrees, which is the steepest of all the bikes on this list. What does that mean? Let me go ahead and quickly explain. A steeper seat tube angle puts you in a more central position for climbing and pedaling. That's a very basic explanation, but feel free to research it. Steeper seat tube angle is typically viewed as better. These bikes offer a slightly nicer fork than the Specialized, along with the added bonus of a tapered head tube for easier fork upgrades down the road 
should you choose to do that. Three great bikes so far, but I've saved my two personal favorite bikes for last, and I'll explain why I like these bikes the most. Next is the 2020 Vitus Nucleus VRS. Also priced at $750, this bike is the only 2020 model on the list, but it is too good not to put on here. Offered in both 27.5 inch and 29 inch wheels, the 27.5 inch version has 120 millimeters of travel, while the 29 inch has 100 millimeters of travel, both using a Suntour XCR32 Boost air sprung fork. Yes, this is the only bike on the list with an air sprung fork and a boost through axle in the front. This bike also uses a 1x10 Shimano Dior drivetrain. While it does have one extra gear, it has the same gearing range as some of the 9 speeds on this list. The heaviest gear being an 11 tooth, with your climbing gear being a 46 tooth. On the 9 speed cassette, you are essentially just missing a gear somewhere in between the top and bottom, so it's not a big deal if you have the 9 speed versus the 10 speed, especially if they have the same range. The 27.5 inch version has a 32 tooth chainring, while the 29 inch model has a 30 tooth chainring. The brakes are Tektro HDM 290 hydraulic disc brakes. The cables are externally routed on the bottom side of the top tube, but it does have internal cable routing for a dropper post. With this bike, you do get a tapered head tube, front through axle, and an air sprung fork, all nicer features that some of the other bikes don't offer. Unfortunately, it does use an open dropout in the rear, and no mention of tubeless compatibility on the wheels. Tires are WTB Vigilante up front and WTB Trail Boss in the back. This bike offers slacker head tube angles at 66.5 degrees for the 27.5 and 67 degrees for the 29 inch version. Both bikes have a fairly slack seat tube angle at 73 degrees, so this bike would probably feel a bit more comfortable with the help of gravity. For the price and in comparison to the other bikes, the Vitus is objectively the best in terms of components. I'll keep an eye out for when they announce the 2021 model, and if there's any significant changes or improvements or price differences or anything at all, I'll pin my own comment in the comment section below so you can see those differences and determine if the 2021 Nucleus is a better deal. Next we have the 2021 Rocky Mountain Soul 10 and the Rocky Mountain Fusion 10. My last picks also come in at $750, with the Soul being the 27.5 inch version and the Fusion being the 29 inch version. It offers 120 millimeters of travel for the Soul and 100 millimeters for the Fusion from a Suntour XCM coil fork. This bike also has the Micro Shift Advent 1x9 drivetrain with clutch, but unfortunately it has the smaller 11 to 42 tooth cassette but it's paired to a relatively small 28 tooth front chain ring. This bike does have the nicer Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes, just like the specialized Rockhopper. This bike also has internal cable routing with dropper post compatibility. Bonus points go to this bike for having a tapered head tube and tubeless compatible wheels. Unfortunately, it does have open dropouts front and rear. The tires on the sole are Kenda Amrax, and you get WTB Ranger tires on the Fusion. Geometry is what really sets this bike apart, as it offers the most modern geometry on the list. It has a nice and slack 66 degree head tube angle on the sole, and 66.5 degrees on the Fusion, with a 74.5 degree seat tube angle on both bikes. Based on the numbers, I think the 27.5 inch Soul version would be the most playful bike on this list, and probably the most competent going downhill. And there you have it! Five awesome hardtails for under $800. Any of these five bikes would make an awesome entry-level mountain bike, and hopefully I've provided you with enough information to make a sound decision based on your riding style and where you live. If you are considering one of the four bikes for $750 on this list, and you think you want to stick with mountain biking for quite a while, I will strongly recommend that you go with one of the bikes on the other list I made, the five hardtails under $1,200, because those bikes do offer a lot more features for just a little bit more money. The two Ragley bikes I featured in that video, for example, the Ragley Marley and the Ragley Big Al, both come in at $1,000, 
and offer an air sprung fork, through axles front and rear, tubeless compatible wheels and tires, tapered head tube, everything that a solid modern mountain bike comes with for only $250 more. If you don't care about upgrading things in the future and you just want an affordable mountain bike to cruise around your local trails, then any of these five bikes would be absolutely perfect for that. But I can't tell you which bike is right for you. Hopefully you've learned enough from this video to make an informed decision on one of these five bikes because they all offer certain pros and cons and Buying a bike is very personal, so I can't sit here and tell you this one is the best. It truly depends on the rider, where you live, and, and, and budget, and all, all kinds of different factors. Let us know down in the comments below if there are any other cool bikes that I missed. Try to keep in mind the one by drivetrain and the hydraulic brakes. I did quite a bit of research for this video, so I think I got five of the best on here. But now is your chance to prove me wrong. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching do the YouTube stuff, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone who's in the market for a bike, subscribe if you aren't already, buy yourself a, a sick Cobra Kyle t-shirt, link in the description below. I've sold a lot more of these than I ever anticipated, so if you did buy a shirt, thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay rowdy within reason. Yeah.